The following solar presentation is a carefully planned step-by-step -step presentation that should lead your client to make a positive decision to go solar with you. It's designed to create trust and respect for you as their confidant in their decision to go solar, to educate the client as to how solar works and what they should uh, be looking for in a solar system. It'll also employ the art of creative selling, which is to answer objections before they have a chance to arise. It'll create a no-brainer scenario financially that allows your client to realize that not going solar is a cost decision and that the solar option is not a cost decision. It'll create a comfort level with the client that both you and Synergy can't be their trusted partners in this project and most importantly, create a sense of urgency that going solar now is a better decision than going solar later and better yet, going solar today is a better decision than letting you know tomorrow. Your visit with the client may be a one-call or a two-call visit. You should be prepared if it is a one-call with a written proposal. Be prepared to make any drops in price and uh, uh, that are reasonable to close the deal. If it's a two-call close, you should uh, use the first call to gain the friendship and the confidence of the client and educate them on solar all the way up to the presentation of the proposal and pricing. The second call should then repeat everything in the first call. Don't assume that they'll remember it and then go to the proposal and close. Never ever price a system unless you're in a position to close. Position to close means all parties to the decision are present, no one laggers, and you are prepared with all information pertinent to that decision, including what kind of pricing and financing you can offer. Upon arriving at the home, knock on the door. It's friendlier than a doorbell. Have your hands visible in front of you in case they're timid and looking through the, uh, looking through the peephole. When they answer, introduce yourself. Hand the homeowner a business card and proceed inside. If they direct you to the living room, ask if the kitchen table is available. This is a better place to transact business. The most important part of your visit is to make a friend and to build trust. Because you know what? It really doesn't matter if you have the best product, have the strongest company, have the lowest price. They will not buy from you unless they like and trust you. Plan on spending at least 20 minutes talking about them and not you and not solar and not your product. Start with questions like, how long have you lived here? Does the rest of your family live nearby? Are you from the area originally? What do you do for a living? You want to look around your surroundings. This will give you a lot of clues as to what to ask, such as, are there pictures of family on the wall? Did you notice a motorcycle or boat in the driveway? Does the house have dual pane windows? Do they have a whole house fan? Are the light bulbs fluorescent? All of this will give you the clues as to whether or not they're energy conscious. So now I'm gonna go into the solar presentation I will do it as if your name is Bob and Sue is your wife, and we're sitting there at the kitchen table. At points in this presentation, you will hear the words sidebar. This means that what follows is where I'm, uh, uh, I'm talking to you as the sales rep or dealer and telling you just why I just put this part into the presentation so you'll see the purpose behind the technique or the way of saying something. At the end of the sidebar, I'll say, okay, now back to the presentation. After you have them at, uh, at a comfort level with you, you can start into a general discussion of solar like this. So, Bob and Sue, I understand you're starting to investigate the possibility of solar. Can I ask what you've learned so far? Sidebar, here you're trying to find out what they know and if they have other bids. The sale is more about what you learn about them and their knowledge and what knowledge you can impart upon them. He who asks the most questions wins. Regardless of what they know or pretend to know, you should still go through the entire presentation. So now, back to the presentation. Uh, you know, Bob, most people don't realize that solar has been going up on rooftops in the United States for over 40 years. Yet the most amazing statistic is that nearly one-third, fully 30% of all the solar ever installed in the United States was installed just over a year ago. 
You know, a lot of people ask me, they say, why was there such a jump in solar installation so recently? Why didn't that happen two years ago or maybe two years from now? Well, actually, there are three reasons for this. Sidebar, this is where I open the presentation book for the first time. And you'll notice I don't necessarily go word for word out of the book, but just have it as an aid. I want them focused on what I'm saying and not trying to read the presentation book. So now back to the presentation. You'll notice this was the first page in your presentation book. The first reason has to do with how solar works, Bob. Basically, when sunlight, not the heat of the sun, strikes the solar panels, it creates a flurry of electron activity. This is DC or direct uh, power, like your car battery. Yet your house uses AC or alternating current. So the power created on your roof comes down through a wire and into an appliance near your electrical panel, about the size of a suitcase. And this appliance, known as an inverter, changes that electricity into AC or alternating current for use in the home. Once it enters the home, this is identical to what your local prov uh, utility provides. It's the same volts, same amps, same resistance, same everything. The only difference is that you don't need to burn coal and oil to produce it, and it's free. So if it's that simple, what do you do at night when the sun is not shining or when it's raining in the wintertime? Well, what we do is we size the system for your home to create more electricity during the day than your home uses during the day. Now, electricity is like water. It's got to flow somewhere. So the excess electricity flows through your meter. Your liter literally will spin backwards, and it goes back to PG&E, and they sell it to somebody else. Now, at night, you're still using electricity, but you're not producing it. This is this. So where's it coming from? Right. It comes from PG&E and your meter spins forward, but you're not charged for it. You're spending the credits that you gave them that afternoon. Basically, PG&E is acting as a battery for you for free because they have to give you credit for your electricity under the same rates and terms that they charge you for their electricity. This is known as net metering. And it not only works day and night, but winter versus summer. You see, when you go solar, you'll no longer get an electric bill each month. You'll get an electric statement. It might say, Bob, you used $100 worth of our electricity this month, and we used $90 of your electricity this month, so you owe us $10. But don't worry about it. We'll settle up at the end of the year. Next month, it might be the opposite, where they owe you $10. But once again, you'll settle up at the end of the year. Now, at the end of the year, you'll receive one electric bill. It's known as a true-up bill. This will show you the pluses and minuses of each month and the total for the year. If your system is built perfectly, this bill will be zero. Everything evens out. Yet, you may use a little more than they use and vice versa, and some may owe the other a little bit of money at the end of the year. So now that you know how solar works and how you get electricity at night and in bad weather, you might probably imagine that PG&E does not like this arrangement because they're not making any money on you, just trading electricity. Well, as a matter of fact, they're giving up a lot of money. Here, take a look at your typical bill. Note that as you use more electricity, you are charged more for each unit or kilowatt of electricity used. This is the opposite of you and I when we go shopping. When we shop and want to buy more of a particular item, we get a quantity discount. The utility is giving you a quantity penalty. In fact, their very best customer gets the very worst rate. Sidebar. Here's where I'll be doing a little of PG&E bashing. You see, I know that they're upset with what they have to pay, and I want to drive that pain home. So back to the presentation. Bob, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but the chairman of PG&E is compensated pretty well. He actually gets a quarter of a million dollars. I pause here for a moment. Now, some people may think that's not a lot of money for the head of such a large corporation, but that's a quarter of a million dollars per week. It takes over 6,000 homeowners like you to pay your monthly bill 
just to keep him in the lifestyle he thinks he so richly deserves. Bob and Sue, I'm not against someone making as much money as they can when it's in a competitive environment. Yet the government gave him a monopoly and say that I must purchase his product regardless of the price charged, and I think it's too much. So, like I said, PG&E does not like this arrangement of net metering, and they want to change it. What they have proposed as a change to the Public Utility Commission, PUC, is they want to credit you the wholesale price of electricity that they take from you, a nickel. And then they want to charge you the retail price, 20 to 40 cents a kilowatt, when they give it back to you six hours later. No wonder they've been known as Pacific Gas and Extortion. They came within one vote of the PUC last year in getting that passed. The likelihood of getting it passed very soon is very high. As a matter of fact, just about a year ago, Modesto, Turlock, and Lodi Electric did change it. And so right now, it's not worth getting solar in those areas. And they did this without any notice because they're privately owned. But with PG&E, there's a caveat. When they change it, and I believe they will soon, those who already have solar will be grandfathered under the old system with dollar-for-dollar dollar net metering for 20 years. Those who had solar last year when they changed it in Modesto, Turlock, and Lodi were not affected. Only the new people who wanted to get solar after the change, but sorry, too late. And there was no notice that would allow them to prepare. So you can see this is one of the three main reasons why one-third of the solar installed was installed just over a year ago. And that's true today also. Solar installations in California are growing at 100% per year. In fact, you may have seen the news recently that California has mandated that every new home built from 2020 on and all apartment homes three stories or less must be built with solar. Now, the second reason why there's been such a huge jump in solar recently has to do with the federal government picking up the tab for 30% of the cost of solar for you in the form of a tax credit. Note, this is not a tax deduction, but a dollar-for-dollar dollar tax credit, which you're entitled to when you purchase solar. Even if you put no money down, you still get the 30% in your pocket at tax time. And it's simple. You use tax form 5695 and just fill in three lines. Line one, how much was your solar? Note here, this individual bought a large system for $51,000. Sidebar, here I am price conditioning high so that when I come in with my lower price, it's a relief. Now back to the presentation. The next line is the 30% of that amount, and the final or last line is your tax credit, $15,000. As you can see from your 1040, when you do your taxes at normal, here, they have a gross income over $100,000. They take their normal deductions and get the lowest income they, good, they could, and they go to the tax table. They find out that their tax liability is $30,000. They bring over their $15,000 tax credit, and I moved that page a little bit early, and they show that they only owe uh, $15,000 in federal taxes. Now, Bob, some people say, well, I don't owe taxes. I get a refund at the end of the year. Actually, they did owe taxes. They're just getting a refund of what they overpaid. The government is now keeping the rest that was withheld from their paycheck during the year. With the credit, they will get back the normal refund plus the 30% extra tax credit sent to them in a check. The challenge is that this solar residential investment tax credit was due to expire at the end of 2016, but it was extended to the year 2022. But it was extended during the Obama administration. As you see here, the Trump administration is pro coal and oil, and they'd like to get rid of this tax credit, and may very well do that. The good news is that once you have the credit, you have until 2022 to use it. This is the second reason why so many people are going solar sooner rather than later. And even if you cannot use the entire tax credit this year, you can use some of it and then carry forward the balance to the next year. Finally, 
The third reason that so many people have decided to go solar recently is the issue that the utilities are restructuring their rates this year to include time of use. You may have noticed that you have a new meter that says smart meter. This is so the utility could read not only how much power you're using, but also what time of day you're using it. As you can see in the yellow time frames, early afternoon, uh, uh, early afternoon and early evening, you'll pay a premium for your electricity. And in the late afternoon, you'll pay an even higher premium. It's structured so you will pay a premium for your electricity during the times you are most likely to use more electricity. This means a 30 to 50% increase in electric bills this year for most customers. What's great about solar is that those with solar, this becomes a profit center for them rather than an expense. You see, the utilities must pay you for your electricity the same amount of money that they charge you for their electricity. Your system will produce the most amount of electricity during the late afternoon during the summer. This is when you'll be sending the most amount of electricity back to the utility for a credit. This is also the time in which they charge the most for their electricity. Therefore, you'll be credited at the higher rate in the late afternoon and in the summer. And when you take electricity back from the utility at night, you'll be charged a lower amount you're making an arbitrage or profit on your electricity with the time of use pricing rather than having it as an expense, as most others will have as it goes into effect. This is the third reason why so many people have recently decided to go solar, now rather than later. So to recap, that 30% of all homes that have gone solar in history went solar just about a year ago, it's because people want to one, get grandfathered under net metering, and not lose out like those in Modesto, Turlock, and Lodi did. Two, they want to make sure that they get the government to pay for 30% of their solar. And three, they want to have the new pricing structure, time of use, work in their favor rather than against them. Uh, Sidebar, please note that the next page shows the time of use for SMUD, which is almost triple the regular SMUD rate. Sidebar. On this page, I'll use an example of a $150 bill. If you know their average bill, use their figures instead. Now back to our presentation. A lot of this comes down to what you're paying now and what you'll be paying for in the future. Right now, your current bill is averaging $150. Our chart shows that in 10 years, that bill will be in the neighborhood of $389 per month and continuing to go up. As you can see on the next page, that means that in the next 10 years, you'll pay, uh, you'll give your utility more than $31,000, or in 15 years, this will be more than $50,000. Therefore, it's easy for me to say that every homeowner in the state of California is going to pay for solar for their home. Now, note, I did not say they're going to get solar, just that they're going to pay for it. They'll either purchase it and own it or give that money to the utility. You see those figures that everyone will pay the utility is more than solar for their home would cost. Fully paid for and producing free electricity for decades to come and immediately increasing the value of their home. Also, besides those three reasons that one third of the solar ever installed was installed just over a year ago, the, uh, the limited uh, future of net, of net metering and the probable loss of the 30% federal tax credit or in the huge spike in electric bills because of time of use pricing, those with solar will experience a significant increase in the value of their home. Uh, here, let me show you. If you were looking for a new home right now and you had two homes side by side and uh, they were identical, and they were the same price. One of them had no electrical bill because it was uh, solar, and the other had a monthly bill. Which one would you want? Of course, the one with solar. That shows us that there is a value added to a home with solar. But the question is, how much value? Now, you can ask five different real estate agents how much value does solar add to a home, and you'll probably get five different answers. I like to go to the experts and the published opinions. For example, 
Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratories, a research lab affiliated with the Department of Energy, showed a 4% increase in home values. So a $400,000 home will increase in value by $16,000. Day one. Yet the National uh, uh, Renewable Energy Laboratory, which did by far the most exhaustive study to date, found in California that solar homes sold 20% faster and for 17% more. Now, actually, I believe that figure is too liberal and that the Berkeley study was too conservative. Finally, Forbes magazine uh, writers are right in the middle talking about Central California home values increasing in the $18,000 to $28,000 range immediately upon putting up solar. So, this increase in value is immediate and does not consider the 30% tax credit or the tremendous savings each year. So now that you know that your home will go up, the question of property taxes should enter your mind. Will your property taxes go up as a result of adding solar? Well, whenever you have a capital improvement to your residence, your property taxes would normally increase also. Yet there's an exclusion to this, and that's solar. With California being such a pro-solar state, the California Revenue and Tax Code number 73 gave a permanent exclusion for the increase in property taxes to anyone who adds solar to their home. And although this was set to expire, it has been extended through the end of the year. Uh, the next area of concern that most people uh, have is the solar product itself. Who makes it? Uh, what's the warranty? Bob, you'll find many contractors who will show you one brand and explain why it's the best. More watts, better warranty. You can drive a truck on it, etc. There is even uh, uh, more that will show you uh, how the competitor's panels easily crack and will pull out a silicone wafer and break it in, in pieces in front of you. This is like arguing that a GE 100-watt light bulb is better than a Westinghouse 100-watt light bulb or a Philips light bulb. They each will produce 100 watts for years to come, and you'll never know the difference. What you want is exactly what PG&E uh, gives you. That is continuous electricity. And if anything breaks, they fix it. The electricity that's coming in your house right now is a result of the transformer on the pole down the street and the power plant across town. Do you know where that transformer was made? Is it gold-plated? Does it matter? No, it does what you want, and that is deliver electricity, and if anything goes wrong, they fix it. When shopping, you should just make sure that they are Tier 1 panels. Tier 1 panels carry a 25-year production warranty, which means that in 25 years, they'll produce as much power as they did day one with an industry-wide standard of 5 tenths of a percent to 8 tenths of a percent degradation factor each year. They are monocrystalline and average around 280 to the third, 300 watts per panel. All panels are the same standard size, about 3 feet by 5 feet. And as long as you're using Tier 1 panels, whether they're Solar World or Mission or Canadian Solar, LG, Jinko, whatever, they'll all perform and warranty just about identical. And everything else is sales talk because the contractor is tied to one or another manufacturer because they get a discount. Tier 2 and Tier 3 panels are more for leases and rentals and are not on the high end. We only sell Tier 1 panels, and we have several to choose come. We can get you any panel that anyone else can, so don't get hung up on the panel. Be concerned with what it delivers and how long the warranty is to, uh, get, the, uh, uh, to get side uh, Tier 1 panels. Sidebar. Some people will say that the other guy uses such and such a panel because they're more efficient and have 340 watts per panel. You need to remember that this is the total size of the system that the price is based on, not what each panel produces. A 340 watt panel charges not only more for that panel, but more for each watt in that panel. If you want to light up a room with 100 watts of light, you can use two 50-watt bulbs or one 100-watt bulb. The result is the same. But what if each 50-watt bulb cost a dollar uh, 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 or $2 total and one 100-watt bulb cost $3 or $3 total? Getting 100 watts of electricity from two 50-watt bulbs is a better deal. 
The only time you need to pay more per watt for solar panels is when you don't have enough roof space to fit all of the 300 watt panels to take care of 100% offset of the client's bill. Use this example if you need to. Now back to our presentation. In the next section of our presentation, we'll talk about the inverter and the three generation of inverters. These three pages, or the next three pages, talk about inverters, but I really do not talk about what's on each page. I talk about the inverters in general, but these pages are in your book for reference. Use them as you wish. Now back to our presentation. Bob and Sue, the other part of the product equation is the inverter. The appliance that converts your DC electricity on the roof to AC electricity for your home. There are three generations. The first is known as a string inverter. This is one inverter about the size of a suitcase that sits next to your electrical panel. It's a low cost version of inverters and it has one problem and that is it connects the panels in a series. And like the old Christmas tree lights, remember when one went out, the whole string went out and you had to test each bulb to see which one was bad and when you found it, you replaced it with the, and the whole string lit up? Well, with a normal string inverter, when one panel gets shaded, let's say 50% shade for a couple of hours, maybe the sun's passing the chimney and casting a shadow. It's like all the panels in that array are now shaded 50% for a couple of hours. Also, if you want to expand the system later, if you have maxed out the inverter, you have to replace the inverter also to expand or put more panels on the roof. The solution to this was the second generation of inverters, known as the microinverter. This is where you place one small inverter, about the size of a box of cereal, on each and every panel. This way, if one panel is shaded, then it doesn't affect the other panels. Also, if you want to expand the system, such each panel has its own inverter, it's like Legos, where you just add one to the other. This, of course, led to a more expensive system, because you could have 20 or more inverters. So finally, the third generation. This is known as Solar Edge Inverter with Optimizer. It has the economy of having one inverter, but each and every panel has a computer chip component known as an optimizer, which performs the function of the individualized inverters so that they can be hooked in parallel and eliminate the problem of the one panel in partial shade affecting the output of the other panels. This is the newest technology and what we recommend for your application. A sidebar. Uh, I'm now going to talk about the monitoring system for clients for solar. You'll note that even though we add a monitoring system for every solar we install, I talk about it as being an option at an additional cost. The reason for this is that in the pricing of the product, I can use this as an added bonus to going with us now instead of later. If asked at this point of the cost of a monitoring system, I say it runs about $600. So now, Back to our presentation. One option that uh, <clears throat> you may want to add to your project is a monitoring system. Uh, this add-on is where you're able to use your home computer, laptop, iPad, or smartphone to monitor the health and production of your system. It'll not only tell you how much electricity you're producing totally, but panel by panel, it'll monitor output. This way, you can tell if there's a problem with your system and where that problem is so that your warranty can take care of it. After deciding on Tier 1 panels, the next area of due diligence is which contractor is appropriate to install your system. Remember, as I said before, over 30% of all the solar installed over the past 40 years was installed about a year ago. The same is true of solar contractors. About one-third of all the solar contractors got their licenses about a year ago. So, Synergy started operations and got licensed in 1995. And over the past 23 years, we have not had one bad mark or complaint to the Contractor State License Board, not one complaint ever to the Better Business Bureau, with whom we carry an a rating. Actually, no bad reviews that we could find anywhere. We're proud of our record. We also started out as a roofing contractor and became one of the largest roofers in the western United States. So in dealing with a project that involves penetrating your roofing surface, it's important that it's handled by those who know that part of construction also. You see, we offer a 10-year workmanship warranty, which includes any problem with the roof 
caused by the solar installation. Here you can see that we cover your home with a $2 million liability policy and we carry a $15,000 bond as required by the state as well as making sure everyone working on your project is covered by workers' compensation insurance. You can feel comfortable with Synergy's history, reputation, and practice of using only the latest technology in Tier 1 equipment. So, let's go over the proposal that our engineers have created specifically for your situation. Sidebar, now is the time that we're going to go into pricing the project. This has many different strategies that will be covered under a separate lesson in the Synergy Academy. Remember, that this is going to be a two-call close, either because you did not have enough information to do the proposal prior to arriving and you don't want to do it while you're there in the house, or two, it's one-legged and you should not try to price a project unless you're in a position to close, which requires both husband and wife to be uh, present. Then You'll stop the presentation here and let Bob know that you now have a good feel for what the needs are and have their PG&E information so you can get them a customized quote and be able to go over with it with Bob and his wife together. Now is the time to pull out your calendar and schedule the next appointment as soon as possible. The very next day is best. If it's a one-call close, then you could go right into your pricing strategy and close. I hope this lesson was helpful. Thank you all for all that you do. And remember at Synergy, we want to make it easy. You sell, we install. Have a great day.